in this video we'll talk about hypoxia and cell injury so stay tuned till this end it's a high yield video so cell injury can happen due to multiple internal and external environmental changes so here is a cell the injury can happen in most susceptible organelles like er mitochondria nucleus membrane etc now once there is a change in the cellular stress levels cell would try to adapt to the stress in extreme cases there would be cell death now we'll talk about one such stress today that is hypoxia so there could be physical damage to the cell like trauma like radiation or in the response of heat but also there could be lack of oxygen leading to hypoxia this is a serious type of damage when and hypoxia can occur when there is anemia for example less in blood less blood cells so enough amount of oxygen doesn't reach every tissue of your body or there could be ischemia that means some block in some of the blood vessels and ultimately some organs getting less blood than necessary there could be cardiopulmonary failure that might lead to hypoxia or sometimes carbon monoxide poisoning can also lead to hypoxia so these are the cause of hypoxia but what is the effect of hypoxia and how a cell responds to hypoxia that is something we are going to cover in this video so hypoxia simply means lack of oxygen and this lack of oxygen could be detrimental it could occur due to respiratory illness or it can also occur to occur due to ischemia and we talked about it but what happens when oxygen level falls what happens to the cell so it's quite alarming for the cell when oxygen levels are low when oxygen levels are low atp levels also fall lower and atp is the cellular currency each time any enzyme inside the cell wants to do something atp is required many biological processes that happens in the cell requires atp and atp is super important for example any biochemical pathway to run it needs atp cell division to occur atp is required for replication for transcription for translation which is crucial part of the central dogma all requires atp also any cell signaling pathway or many kinase enzyme involved in the cell signaling pathway requires atp for its proper activity so one can clearly understand when atp falls down these processes would be abrogated but how is atp generated atp can be generated by glycolysis or uh, elect glycolysis and oxidative phosphorylation now oxidative phosphorylation helps to make the majority of the atp and glycolysis makes a little bit amount of atp in extreme case of starvation there is fatty acid oxidation which can also generate atp but the question is how could the atp be depleted we already talked about it lack of oxygen lack of nutrient like glucose i mean during starvation then mitochondrial damage or chemical toxicity might lead to a problem in uh, oxfos for example in the oxidative phosphorylation oxygen is a terminal electron acceptor so in this in this process when there is a um, lack of oxygen this entire electron transport chain falls off and that lead to a problem atp is not generated by the f type atpases in the mitochondria so now the backup option is to generate some atp with glycolysis but when there is a significant less amount of atp in under hypoxic condition many channels such as sodium potassium ion exchange pump which requires atp for its functionality is not performing optimally also when there is low atp production kinase enzymes are not functioning properly so one can imagine a pathway such as map kinase pathway which has a kinase cascade would totally be altered when there is a low atp now the atp is required for sodium potassium ion exchange pump once that is not working properly sodium builds up inside the cell and sodium attracts more water because the change of osmolarity attracts more water molecules in as a result of that the cells swell up swelling of cell is not really good this lead to 
ER stress or endoplasmic reticulum stress. Also, low ATP triggers anaerobic glycolysis. It's a backup power generator for ATP production. So some amount of ATP is produced, but side by side, lactic acid is produced. Being acidic, lactic acid changes the pH inside the cell. Many enzyme requires proper and optimal pH for their functioning. They stop functioning as well. Now the ER stress lead to swelling of the endoplasmic reticulum leading to detachment of the ribosomes which are attached on the ER surface. That overall means that there is a change and dramatic decrease in the protein production in the cell. And that leads to problem. So loss of ATP or low ATP lead to replication problems, transcription or translation problems. It would severely affect cells which are actively dividing like the stem cells or it would affect the cells or cell cells which are present in a metabolically active tissue like hepatocytes present in the liver. Another problem that the cell face is calcium overload. Now there are certain molecules on the surface of the cell known as voltage gated potassium, uh, voltage gated calcium channels. Those would also be not functional optimally when there is low ATP. As a result, calcium builds up inside the cell. But why it is detrimental? Cell always try to maintain a low level of calcium inside the cell. Exterior calcium is quite high and the interior calcium is very low. Whatever calcium is present in the cytosol is strategically channeled into the endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria. But when cell swells off, this process is abrogated and this calcium gradient is not at all maintained. Now cellular concentration of calcium increased. In the cytosol, there are several enzymes that gets activated like proteases, phospholipases, endonucleases and ATPases. Each of that has detrimental function. Protease can cleave off the cytoskeletal element. Phospholipase can lead to membrane damage. Endonuclease can chop off uh, the nucleic acid materials in the nucleus. ATPase would lead to further ATP depletion leading to a massive toxic scenario inside the cell. Moreover, calcium increase, calcium increase lead to activation of calpins and also lead to an activation of inactive caspase 3 to active caspase 3. Caspase cleavage ultimately lead to apoptosis. So that is why hypoxic injury which leads to low level of ATP can have detrimental consequences on cellular processes. So I hope this video was useful and you can understand this. So see you in next video.